these games can bring families together. It yes. can bring teams together. You know, it can and, open up conversations. Yes, open up conversations. So it can be part of the self care. But board games are for everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. You can see today is going to be a special day if you're looking at this on YouTube. Now you haven't seen this if you're listening to this on an audio, but I promise you we're talking fun and games today. Literally, we're going to talk to who I'm calling the guru of games. We have with us on a guest as a guest on our podcast. This is Ramos Law Difference Makers podcast. I have Miss Starla and Mr. Mick Fitch, and you're going to love their story. So as you know, I'm your host, Dr. Jim Hoven of the Ramos Law Difference Makers podcast. And our goal is to get people on the show telling their story who are making a difference. And we all forget that sometimes we need to play in life. We need to get some gamification in our lives. And these guys have perfected it to the point where it's what they do. And so they've started this incredible program that we want to talk about today. It's called Our Family Plays Games. And so stay tuned. You're going to want to actually share this with your friends. It is so fun. It's so cool. And so I can't wait to talk to these guys and let you hear their story and all of us learn a little bit more about games. So as we get started, Starla, Mick, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thanks for having it's us. good to be here. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah. And I got to tell you, I feel honored because as you know, I had heard from one of our team, Macy, who just loves you guys, met you and <laughs> thinks you were so yeah. great. She's like, we got to get these guys on the show. I said, tell <laughs> me why. We're looking at the thing. And so I'm just studying just a little bit about you. You were on freaking Good Morning America? Yes, yes. you were, yes. Uh -huh. yes. I'm like, yes. I watched it and I was going, they're coming on with a person like me when they were on with <laughs> Michael Strahan? Wow, so <laughs> it is me that is honored to have you. So welcome to the show. And I got to ask you, how did you guys get into what you do right now? I'm going to let you describe what you do mm -hmm. with our Family Plays game so that mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. take that thunder. And then tell us how you got into this. Okay. Well, we're going to give you our standard introduction that yes. we do on every yes. show that we're on. So for those of you who don't know us, I'm Starla. I'm it. And we are our family plays games. games. <laughs> Boom! Goes the dynamite, baby. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. that story goes back uh, about, what, five or six years yes. now as far as with our family plays games. Uh, we've always been board gamers, even as kids. Um, so we started trying to teach our son to, uh, different games. Um, but we were finding that the games were the same ones we played 30 mm -hmm. plus years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were pulling out Monopoly and Sorry and Scrabble life. and all of that and Life. And, you know, it's like I told my husband, I said, there's got to be something else. Gotta be. This cannot be the yes. only games they've created in the past three decades. So he started searching. Yes. And he found what was the first one, baby? Forbidden, Forbidden Island. Island. Yes. What was it yes. called? Forbidden Island. Forbidden yes. Island. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What, what attracted you to that game? Why, yes. why that it was cheap. cheap. It was cheap. <laughs> and and it was small. And I said, well, let me see if Starla play this. But see, I was wrong and mistaken because she doesn't like co-op games. She doesn't want to work with nobody. Because I said, Starla, I got a new game. We're not going to play for cheesy no more. No more Scrabble. We're going to start with this game. She said, well, Mick, what you do? I said, well, it's this island that's sinking, you know, tile by tile. And we have to work together to get to the, get some treasure and then get to the helicopter to get off. She said, work together. I said, yes, work together. She said, what, all of us? I said, yes. She said, I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. I don't want to work with none of y'all. Uh, none of y'all. So yes, so it, yes, it is. Yes, it that's is. how it always comes yes, out. It, it wasn't quite that drastic. Yes. It was just, he said co-op. And it's like, I got to make decisions with everybody. I want to do my own kind of thing. And so that one was a no. No. And, and I said, Starla, no, wait, you let's, let's just for a little clarification and get the record straight. Now, was it because you didn't want to work with people or because you didn't want to share a win? You wanted the win all to yourself. You wanted to be the queen of the game. All of the above. Yes. <laughs> all of the above. So, so I had to go, uh, I had to find something else. So I went to this website that everybody goes to in the industry, uh, into the hobby mm -hmm. called boardgamegeek.com. Okay. BGG for short. So I went there and it's like the, the Wikipedia or the Bible of board gaming because yes. it has every game every known to man game. on that on that uh, website. So I went there and I said, well, I kind of looked up and said games for beginners because I didn't I see all these games. Like, I don't know what to play. Yes. So I went, you know, games for beginners. And then there's this one game that stuck out and everybody said, try it, mm -hmm. get it, play it. And that was Settlers of Catan. Okay. And yeah. I was like, is okay, right Settlers of Catan. 
Is that yes. right behind you? Yeah, that was all of those, all of those yeah. behind. It. But the top one, the top one is the base game. Yeah. So we said, I'll get Sellers of Catan. Now they call it Catan. Yeah. But you know, but some people might think it's the other pronunciation, which is the wrong one, and that's Catan. Yeah, we said Sellers, Catan for the long Yeah, we said Sellers of Catan so forever yeah, totally until right the after. company told us you're saying it wrong. Yes, it's, Catan. it's Catan. Yeah. So <laughs> so we got that, and I said, Stall, I got a new game. She said, What is it? I said, Sellers of Catan. She said, What do you do? I said, Well. We're all fighting to, to build our own civilization on this island that has nobody on it. So we're going there to make our own civilization, our cities, our villages, all that. And we're trying to negotiate with each other. But when ultimately, we're trying to see who's going to win overall. She said, I like that. So we, <laughs> there we go. So we, we played that game and, and Grant got into it. And, and you know, son. we kept, yeah. that's our son. He's our only son. Um, he got into it, and I guess at the time he was about maybe nine or nine, so, or whatever. Yeah, nine, yeah. And, eight or nine. and we started playing games, and then we led to going to different game nights and game days yeah. and gaming conventions. Yeah. And when we would go to the different gaming conventions, we would see uh, a lot of people there, but most of those people didn't look like us. Mm -mm. So we didn't see a lot of diversity, and we didn't see a lot of families. And so I told my husband, I said, well, you know, I would love for us to have more people of color at these events because we would sometimes feel really uncomfortable, you know, being there. People would look at us a little strange. Yeah. Like, Why are we here? Why are you there? This family with their little boy playing games, you know, and it would look really weird for us and felt weird. So I said, well, you know what? If we start social media, maybe we can meet other families in the area and maybe we can, you know, get a little community going. So in 2018, we uh, started a Facebook page and we came with the name Our Family Plays Games and put that out there. So we started putting pictures of the games that we would play and mm -hmm. places we would go. And we got a little traction. Yeah, you know, we, we played with that for a few years. And then finally in 2020, I told my husband, I said, we, we need to go on YouTube. I said, I oh, no. More people. No, people we're not going to... on there. No. Why did you want to go on there, Mick? What was the? I don't want to do. I don't want to do all that. I'm not, you know, on TV. Now she went to school for yeah, media my, my and communication. Is in media communication. Yeah, yeah, but see, I didn't do that. Mine is marketing. I said I don't want to do all that. Yeah, but, and but she said, tell, Mick, man, your personality is like boom everywhere. I, I know, <laughs> but you know, she said, Mick, but we got to go on mm -hmm. to make an impact. We got to be seen. Yeah. To make an impact. Because I told him, you know, a lot of times we put pictures yeah. out of the games, and people mm -hmm. didn't see who we were. Yeah. So I yeah. said, well, if they see us, then I said, okay, maybe that, that if they enjoy it, then maybe I can enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Because we knew it was a, a problem with awareness. A lot of people of color are not aware yeah. that these games exist. So we started the YouTube channel in January of 2020, and then we got with the Dice Tower, which is another big organization in the hobby, and we were on their channel for a while. And within six months, we got called by GMA to do Good Morning America because they like the message. Our message is all about in inclusivity and, and you know just bringing people together regardless of your walk of life. Board games are for everyone. So that's our message. That's been our mission from day one. And it, it resonates with a lot of people and it's helped us you know, get a great following. We've got an audience of over 23,000 people wow. uh, that watch wow. us. And, and it's, it's just a wonderful hobby. And we're finding that a lot of people were just unaware of the lack of diversity, and now the awareness is making people more yeah. proactive and making sure that people are aware that these games exist. Yes. That's so cool. Now, how have you guys used the platform is, is as you've got these 23,000 followers, which is exceptional, do you teach people how to play specific games or is, it more, is the message more about, hey, let's come together, whatever your game is. Tell us about your game, your favorite this, your favorite that. Like, is it instruction or is it more messaging, or do you guys play virtually where, hey, we're all playing the same board game from all over the world, and now it's my turn. Like, what what's the primary focus of how you guys do what you do? Well, it's kind of a mixture of all of that, yeah. you know, because we, you know, we, we, we start out, you know, maybe talking about some games, a list mm -hmm. of games and stuff like that, but then I said, Starla, we got to do more, mm -hmm. and she said, what do you, do? I said, what about we do something in the range of kind of like, you know, maybe, you know, like talk about lifestyle mm -hmm. with this lifestyle, then have segments, different mm -hmm. segments, talk about yeah. different things. Yeah. You know, board games is a lifestyle for us. Yeah. You know, for we, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of yeah. people, it's as part of our lifestyle. We include these board games and in, in the whole totality of what we do mm -hmm. every day. 
So I said, let's talk about that because there's a lot of people out there that do the same thing that we do. So now our shows not only talk about, you know, board games and we, we introduce board games and talk about board games, but we talk about just, you know, we have people sending questions about, hey, how'd you guys start dating or what you guys do, you know, you know, for dinner one night. And then, you know, we talk about different things like we're on a weight loss journey now. We talk about that. And we just talk about, you know, board game news. We talk about what's going on in the news and yeah. in, in the board game, you know, hobby. So we do all that just to kind of like, you know, spread that out. But the one thing that I'm proud about that we do, that we, we definitely do spread the message of diversity and inclusion, definitely. But the one thing to really push that out there, Starla just, you know, said, hey, I want to do a new program. Mm -hmm. I want to do a program. Since we have all these people watching us, mm -hmm. let's do a new program where we show others in the hobby, other content creators, other designers, other folk that's out there at underrepresented voices, uh, you know, let's show them off. And so we decided to make this one, you know, show called OFPG Voices, OFPG Voices, where it it, it don't it spotlight it don't spotlight us, it spotlight others in the in the in the hobby that would not be seen no matter what. Yeah. You know, so we do that, and we want people to see like, hey, we're not the only ones out there, you know, talking and doing things, but we have others, and we've been doing that for almost what about yeah, we, a good year? Yeah, we launched OFPG yeah. Voices in 2022 to help other smaller channels, yeah, you know, uh, grow and be seen, but also to normalize the fact that people from all walks of life, whether you're BIPOC or you're LGBTQ plus, everybody likes board games, and most yeah. of us. I'd say 95% of humanity has grown up playing some type of game. And so board games are something that's a way of life for everybody. It's a fabric of, of life. Uh, but again, because this hobby has been so niche yes. for the past decade or so, a lot of people didn't know it existed. And so when we go out and we meet people or we talk to people on our show, or we go to different conventions, we find that there are a lot of people who just didn't know. So having someone like us who says, hey, this hobby is for you. You're welcome in this hobby. You know, come join us. They're happy to hear that. Yeah. And we really focus on trying to get more people into the hobby. We're looking at people who don't know and we want to introduce games to them. You know, what we call quote unquote gateway games. Some people say welcoming games. We want to introduce those games to people who don't know. People who are still playing Monopoly. Yeah. We have a series called Beyond Monopoly. So we want oh, to help them cool. get beyond yeah. Monopoly. Um, so we, we do all of that work to make the hobby a better place, a more inviting place, mm -hmm. a more inclusive place. That's awesome. And how many games do you guys have? I know these are all your games. These are your yes. private collection. Do you even know how many games? Yes, we do know. Well, we do know. Yes, we do know. No, because I know. No, you don't. Well, no, I, I, I was keeping track. Yes. And I stopped counting at what about six hundred? No, no, we're at uh, seven hundred and sixty-two. Okay, so we're yeah. at seven sixty-two. But you can <laughs> minus fifty because we just recently I decided because I was kind of. I had issues with parting with games. You have issues. No, I you have issues. Yes, I, I do. I have that. issues. Not with 750. Yeah, I have issues. So, <laughs> you know, I, you know, Starla said, you're never going to get rid of some of these games. And, I, and then I said, no, I'm not. But then later on, not just recently, I decided to get rid of some of my games and, and give them to people, you know, put yeah. them in other households that people are playing. Because some of them, we don't get a chance to play all these games all the time. And then some games we just don't like anymore. And I just, yeah. I'm just holding them like, you know, I'm holding them hostage. So I said, let me, let me yeah, let some of them go. We want to get a better home yes. because uh, we were sitting on games and any games we hadn't played in the past five years, yeah. it was time for that game to yeah. go find some home. But I mean, you say minus 50, but it's not minus 50 because we're getting games every yeah, we day. Yeah, games every day. So we yeah. probably got more than 50 since we did the Yes, culling. we have. Yes. It's called culling. It's culling, our, yeah. Our, our, our shelves. But yeah, we've got more games. So Because on our show... <laughs> It's yeah. over 700. Let's yeah, it's over seven. That. It's about 700. But on our show, we have a segment called What Did What Did We Get? And Starla would, you know, turn to me and say, Mick, what do we get? Like games we got in. Yeah. And almost every show, we have games coming in. Yeah. Every show. Yeah. yeah. We get games all the time. People send them from all around the world. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you guys do your show? Every week. Every Sunday. So, yeah, we come out on Sunday every, every Sunday. week. And then our OFPG voices is uh, bi-monthly. So it's every other Wednesday, the OFPG Voices show yes. comes out. So we do six constant shows every month. And then we have other shows we do, like previews and playthroughs yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. And interesting to me, there are different kind of games. And I want to go into this because now I honestly forgot about the board game hobby, the tradition. And I grew up playing those things too. 
and then you know you get busy and you get family and yeah. then you you know all this other stuff happens and instead of the family game being stuff now you're going to family entertainment out of you know whether it's movies or then of course video games became huge and, yeah. and all yeah. this kind of thing so i'm interested in um the history of the did did board games ever become unfashionable and you guys are bringing it back or has it just always been under so many of our radars because we just occupy our mind with other stuff well you know board games were off the radar for a long time it was basically just a niche hobby mm -hmm. and then that's when sellers of Catan came in and kind of brought it to the forefront just a little bit yeah. but now for the past I think maybe about like five or six mm -hmm. years it's kind of like a board game renaissance yes. so where cool. now wow. yeah where now mm -hmm. you know board games are kind of kind of oozing into the mainstream yes. you know because it was really you know uh, Klaus, uh, uh, Klaus Teuber, mm -hmm. who created Catan, just died at the beginning of this month. Yes, April 1st. Oh, April, 1st. April 1st. He died at the beginning of this month. And and it was so refreshing to mm -hmm. see not only the board game industry, the, the board game industry talking about it, but I saw, uh, you know, Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. I saw, you know, the you know New York Post. I saw different, you know, uh, mainstream news talking about that and even got on mm -hmm. CBS Morning news talked about them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God, you know, now it's kind of getting out into the mainstream that these games are here. We yeah. were on Good Morning America talking about, you know, different games. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of getting out there yeah. and and people are seeing like, oh my Lord, mm -hmm. I can get these different types of games. And the one big thing is that now these games are going into, you know, big box stores, Target, mm -hmm. Walmart, and Barnes and Nobles. Now you see these different type of games in there, not just traditional Monopoly and Life and Sorry and stuff. You see it all these others. So the availability of it is kind of turning people's heads like, oh, what is that game over there? So yeah, they keep talking about this board game renaissance and it, and it, it, it is, is happening. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there are conventions happening. all over the country, all over yes. the world. Yeah. Board game conventions where people go for three, four days and do nothing but play games and it's happening wow. everywhere. And, and it's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it's <laughs> good to see you. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you no. have um, have you noticed that games are broken up into different types? I mean, categories yeah. for sure. I, mm -hmm. And there's two things that I was specifically wondering. If one game that came into my head that I had totally forgotten about until we were talking five minutes ago was a, a game called Rich Dad Poor Dad, or, mm -hmm. or called Cash Flow for Kids by the mm -hmm. guy that wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad. His yeah. name was Robert mm -hmm. Kiyosaki. And it was a game about financial literacy and financial education. And while mm -hmm. it was fun, it was a board game. You spin, you do this. Then you learn yeah. about money and buying real estate and all that. I found it to be great. And I wanted to teach my kids that way in the type of games. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is that the majority of games? The minority? Is that a really one-off thing? Are most games for entertainment? Or is there a good number about education? Well, well, nowadays, it's a all the games do different things. You yeah. know, you have co-op games where you work together. Mm -hmm. Then you have competitive games where you work against each other. You know, they have all different type of mechanisms. But the one thing you can find anything to do. Let's say that you want a game to just teach you about birds or you want to play bird game. There's a game, a big game called Wingspan, where you actually playing this fun game competing against each other, trying to, you know, get different birds and stuff. Yeah. But on the cards, it tells you about the bird that you're getting. I mean, it's educating you about different birds. Yeah. And then for, for economic games, I mean, there's a ton out there that can teach you how to, you know, hold your resources, buy and try to get resources to make your company, your village or whatever get big. So, I mean, it's just yeah, so much. The games yeah. are educational. Yeah. But it's fun education. It's, it's fun it's it's Absolutely. Like that yeah. one where you're yeah. saying, oh, okay, I'm going to teach you about cash flow. When you're playing a game like Settlers of Catan, yeah. you're learning how to negotiate, how to uh, create a village, how to build, you know, uh, connectors to that village, to other th other places in town. You learn how to manage resources, but it's all done in the guise of the game. Yeah. We always laugh on our show that uh, Settlers of Catan taught our son how to negotiate, but he Kinda. just didn't learn how to he negotiate. He didn't learn how to negotiate he does, good. He, he's a cutthroat negotiator. He's a hustler. But That's he what he is. Hustler. Negotiate yeah. because of that game and mathematic skills. You yeah. Have uh, mathematic skills to play most of these games because you're adding things up, you're subtracting things. So, I mean, you've got to be able to read because yes. so, I've got a lot of uh, rule books and then uh, different flavor texts on the cards. So there's just so much going on in the games where education may not be the main thing you're getting, but you get it as a byproduct. Yes. Yeah. And what are yeah. the, the basic, are there like 
four, or there might be way too many to even name genres of games. So we have these that are oh. educational, and then we have some that are card based, and we have some that are yes. this and that. Like, I, do yes. games get broken up into that, or is that just? Oh it yeah, just doesn't yeah. work like that. Oh yeah. yeah, you know you have well you have overall the tabletop games. Yes, you know everything on a everything tabletop. Everything can be played on a yeah. tabletop. So a card yeah. game is considered a board game because you have to play it on a, a, a tabletop. tabletop. And then yeah. you have you know like RPGs, you know role playing games yeah. that you know they do that the Dungeons and Dragons and stuff that's starting mm -hmm. to come up now. And those are the role playing games. Then you have the board games. You have miniature games. Mm -hmm. You know you know the guys you know guys and gals who play with just miniatures and stuff. So you have all these different types. And you have and dice games. You have games dice games, based, card games. You know, yeah. It's a board game. Dice are the main mechanic yeah. that you're using to do things with. Uh, then you have card games, even though it's a board game, cards are the main mechanic. So they're different. And we say mechanics, it's different uh, ways you uh, get around the board, or you yeah. not around the board, or yeah. how to play the game. How to play the game. It's, yeah. That's not around. It's not yeah. Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you have different mechanics, like you have mechanic like uh, hand management that's with hand cards yes. then you have like worker placement putting your little meeples around the you mm -hmm. know the board yeah. i mean you just have so many different things you know yeah. you you can you you have to you know that's out there that's kind of you know kind of divided up that you can play mm -hmm. now the one thing we do we had one episode mm -hmm. that we do talk about to be, you know to beginners and people just coming to the hobby yeah. all the different terms and yes. and things that you board might game terminology yeah board game terminology yes. that you might walk into and say what is all this stuff yeah. going on worker placement and dice <laughs> what is all this so yeah. there's resources out there to say hey we understand you're just coming into it here's all the terms and all the things mm -hmm. that's out there that might trip you up but we're here to help yes now, have you guys ever considered with all your vast experience, you've obviously played as many games as anybody else, it sounds like, did, did a game ever come into your mind, an idea for a game that you guys then kind of executed on or gave to a game maker and said, hey, this would be a great game. Is that something no. where you guys? No, we haven't done that. No, we haven't done that. We're connoisseurs yes. of oh, games. Yeah. We love, we're just connoisseurs. Yeah. Yeah. You're the wine yeah. drinker, not the wine maker. Exactly. <laughs> and that's when we were in a wine game, but you know, yeah, we were in a wine yeah, there game. You go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. What's the funnest type of game that you guys enjoy? I, I like competitive games. Yeah. I, I like to compete. Um, I, I'm not a co-op person. No. I, I'm not cooperative. No. Um, so not at all. Competitive. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. No. And I like worker placement games. I love being able to take my, my little meeple um, and put it out on the board and get whatever I need to get from it. So uh, those are games I like. Yeah, and that's me too. I think we're kind of, you know, together on that. You know, I, I'm more competitive because we love to compete against each other. Yes, we and do. mine is a worker placement too. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. What types of lessons are there? We talked so many things about life of what we could learn on finances and education mm -hmm. and negotiating, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Is there something that you guys have learned about family and the connecting and the things that you're seeing that games mm -hmm. brings that maybe would be different from the video experience, uh, whether it's a video game or going to a movie mm -hmm. or sit and watch TV, because again, it, it, there's a more active role to a video mm -hmm. game than a passive one of just sitting and observing. So have you noticed in your family or the families that connect with you back and forth through your organization, um, commonalities that game playing has brought? Well, we always talk about our son when he was growing up because now he's in college now. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we started in the hobby, he was still young. And what I always tell parents is that I loved playing board games with him and getting him off the video games because I got a chance to see his mind work. I got a chance to talk with him one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. where, you know, with the video games, they got the little headphones on and they're all into this and you don't get a chance to see them, you know, thinking, even though my son will tell you, oh, Bob, when you play video games, you're thinking, you're thinking. But when I put him at the table yeah. and I can negotiate with him or I can see him, you know, win this game where I thought, oh, no, I'm going to beat him. Mm -hmm. And he won mm -hmm. because he was out thinking me, you know, Survivor, the show Survivor, he was able to outwit, outwit outlast and outplay me. And it's wonderful to see him do that at age 12 or at age 13, where with the video game, I would never see that. So the interaction between family members and with my husband and I, yeah. we like to compete. So a lot of times if, we, if we're having a disagreement about something, put it on that table with the board game. Oh, <laughs> that helps okay. a lot. Yeah. Who, who okay. won the game? Okay, that's who's doing the dishes. <laughs> and then, you know, another, and, you know, another thing that you learn too is how to lose. 
How to lose. You know, that's another yes. big thing is to learn how to, to be, lose. Yes, to, to not you know, be a sore loser. Not, how not to be a sore loser and say, okay, I lost this time, mm -hmm. but I'm going to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm going to think back. of another solution yes. so I can win. Yes. You know, and and I, you know, yes. I'm gonna, you know, you probably got me this time, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna think of something so I can win next time. Yeah, my, my husband learned that. Yes, I learned <laughs> that. <laughs> yes, I had to learn from that. I had to teach him that lesson because she wins he was too a much. Sore, he was a sore loser. She wins too much. She and when we first started playing, he would get so angry yes. when he would lose. Yeah. And, and I was thinking, did you think I could not win? I mean, is that what you thought? You I know? just, I just so, wanted to win. And I, I like winning. You know, hey, if you're gonna be a sore loser, yes. then we're not gonna play. Yeah. So I had to learn. He to had lose. to learn. I said, okay, I lost. And I'm gonna lose. Now, you know? Yeah. And, and you have to be a gracious winner. Yeah. But with, in our household, I don't know. Are we gracious? We we tease each other. I don't know. But I don't I mean, know. You should be a know. gracious winner. Yes. And and be a better loser to where you know how to lose, and that way you can learn how to win. And then also That's how good. to communicate, because these games are not yes. done in silence. No. You know, not done in silence. Yeah. So you can talk to and communicate mm -hmm. and let folk, you know, let folk, you know, like, oh, what did you do there? You know, you have to learn how to communicate. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a what good thing. So those are some things that we've learned. Mm -hmm. What What do you think about using, and maybe this is a thing or maybe it's not, about using gaming, or let's replace that, the hobby of playing board games, because I think gaming is, is considered a video mm -hmm. term, I don't know. But playing board games, learning all these skills, have you seen it used as an application in um, groups that you might not think of to help them navigate the life? Like, let's say it's at-risk youth or people who are undergoing certain kinds of stress or those that are um, having mental health issues. Is there is there a place for that you guys are aware of where games actually help heal a community or an individual? Okay, I, I don't know of a place that does that. Now, as for us, we take our show on the road, as I like yeah, to say. Yeah. We go to different organizations, such as we went to Girls Inc. here in Omaha and took the games out there and introduced these girls to games they had never, never heard, heard of. of. Yeah. You know, so we played games with them. Uh, even with my husband's job, we've uh, done uh, games at his job. And then uh, before I left my job, I'd taken games to my job and we played games. And it's a great way for companies, especially, yeah. to bring their employees together. You know, especially if they're having like a, uh, what, do you, what do you guys call it on Friday? Oh, we have like a kind of like an all staff meeting, but we do different things. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's like self-care. Self-care. Yeah, self-care. Yeah, that, that's the word. Yeah. Self-care. So it's a good way to do that when you want to have a self-care day with your company to bring in these board games. But you yeah. need people who know how to play them. And, and not you really, because, you know, like with my company, you know, my, uh, you know, my uh, executive director mm -hmm. and also the director of operations said, Mick, can you, you know, we know what you do. They, they know what I do. And he said, well, can you come in with your family and maybe show us some board games and stuff on a Friday, which we have our like self-care mm -hmm. days. We did it twice and they loved it mm -hmm. because we brought in and, you know, I even had a director, you know, one of my directors said, Mick, this, we need this for our team building. And I was like, okay. They said, I love this. We need this for team building. Yeah. So I had them think of different games mm -hmm. that they could use in their, you know, the, in the work. In workplace, you know, it's a, it's a party game called Just One where everybody, you know, tries to help, you know, you all have these different, you know, um, like little uh, plaques that you try to write words on and you try to, you know, you get a word, you know, the player who's, uh, you know, the who's playing at that time says, let me give you a word. You get a word and then everybody else tries to find words to help them uh, figure out what that word is they just said because they don't know. And so that kind of helps everybody work together to try to help this one player find this word. Mm -hmm. So, and and one well, of my you're, you're giving the word, the player gets yeah. the word blindly. Yeah, they don't know what word they're choosing. They the word, each word on the card has a number. So if they pick number three, they don't know what number three is. Yeah, but everybody else, knows. everybody else knows. And those people have to give them one word yes. to help them figure out what that word is. And and uh, the director was uh, was uh, playing it, and she said, "Mick, I need this game. I need it." Because this will help me with my team work with all, you know, team, uh, you know, work with all my different, you know, teams. And I was like, that's, that's cool. And she said, what's that? What is it? She bought it right then and there. She bought that. Mm -hmm. And then I have other folk, you know, with the other games that we play, mm -hmm. said, Mick, I need this for my family. Mm -hmm. I want our family to get together. Mm -hmm. What is this game called? And I just have people, you know, now I have my coworkers come to me and say, Mick, what do you think a game for this for my family? Mm -hmm. You know, I have a big gathering coming. What game do you think that, you know, we can all work together? So 
it's good to show games mm -hmm. and, and let folk know that these games can bring families together. It yes. can bring teams together, you know. It can and, open up conversations. Yes, open up conversations. So, it can be part of that self-care because yeah. it can be relaxing or it can it can make you tense. But then once the game is over, you get that whole, you know, release of, oh my God, I can't believe we, we finished this game. Yes. It's, it's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it's great. and it's really good to see this up close and personal and in real time with me at my job. So it's really yeah. cool. You're, you're actually living it. Is yes. there tournaments of these games like you would see in, in other we'll call them sports where, I mean, I know you talked about the conventions where people play mm -hmm. games all, all, you know, for a weekend or whatever, but is there a, let's say this Catan game, is there mm -hmm. a Catan tournament where people well, of all backgrounds come to it and then to see who wins at a large level? Well, funny you should ask. Yes. <laughs> and they do have a Catan tournament too, yes. a world championship, actually. Well, funny yeah. you should ask. There is a World Series of Board Gaming. Yes. Oh, they just wow. did the first one this past year in 2022. Yes. They're doing their second one uh, this year in 2023. We will be a part of the one in 2023. Mm -hmm. It's going to be playing? held in Las Vegas. Uh, we're commentators. We're commentators. Uh -huh. We're commentators. Oh, so yeah, they're good. bringing us in to commentate. Yes, we're commentating. Um, yeah. And so how does it work? So how, how, what's the format? There's a big prize. Well, if you go to World Series of Board Gaming online, uh, I think the top prize, uh, I forget what the number is, 25000 It's 25000 for oh, each, uh, each yeah. tournament. And it's just a game. You know, you, you yeah. get into like a, uh, it's, it's a, they, they come up with a game mm -hmm. and they they have like, well, they, they have like, a list of games. A list of games. That they, yeah. yeah. And you can enter that game and you just play it down. Just like the World Series mm -hmm. of Poker, it's mm -hmm. the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah, you so they thing. might have six there. or eight or 10 different games that people yes. can yes. enter and then you yes. play for that for a champion. Yes. yes, and yes. people pay, they pay they're paying good money to go to this series and try to win big money. Yeah, big money, mm -hmm. big That's money. Amazing. Mm -hmm. What do you guys get most out of the not the playing of games, but the spreading of your your message about inclusion and and making sure that these are accessible that to that people know about them and then get involved in them. What what does this bring to your lives as? you know, souls and people on this earth and in, in, in your sharing of this message, because I think it's really unique and really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think when we see the messages that we get on our YouTube channel mm -hmm. and in our emails and we hear people say, my, you know, I'm just so glad mm -hmm. I found you guys. You know, I didn't think it was, you know, just recently we got somebody that just said, I didn't think I could find somebody doing these games that look like me. Mm -hmm. And I'm thank you know thank you for you know thank you for doing what you're doing. Or just other people saying I'm just so glad that mm -hmm. you know you just you, you bring joy to my face. We had a, a, a individual in Australia saying every Monday because you guys come out on Monday, not my Sunday, but every Monday you're the first thing I watch in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. so we get messages from around yeah. the world, and we've been invited to talk to people on different podcasts, and we've been written about all around the world because. They love the message. They yes. love the community that we're building. And, and we practice what we preach. You know, yes. they see us doing this. They see us going out to community uh, centers, working with other groups. They see us doing game nights. Mm -hmm. And then when we go to conventions, to have people come up to you and hug you, and, yes. I mean, to the point of tears, and we're like, oh, we're so happy to see yes. you guys in this hobby. And it's just like, wow, okay, our presence was needed and we are making a difference. And it just keeps us motivated to continue to do what we do. Yes, yeah, because yes. it's yeah, because it's weird when somebody comes to you and say, "Can I take a picture? Is it okay if I hug you?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's cool, you know, do that." And you we, know? we get invited. We're, we've been to so many conventions because they want to see yeah. us, and they want their their community to get a yes. chance to see us one on one. So they bring us out to these conventions so people can actually see the people who talk about what we talk about. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a beautiful message. It is. We love it. You should. Like, you should be really proud. It's such a cool, niche, fun yeah. thing. And, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering if someone is watching this and now they're kind of enraptured in your personalities and getting caught up into the, man, maybe I should check this thing out like I am. Is there a way that you would tell them to start looking for their first game? Is, do, do, is there a process that they should go to? through to go, well, what kind of game would I like? Is there a series of questions or how would you guide someone who hasn't played games since they were a kid and has been all in the video thing or into sports or whatever? How do they come back to games and find the best game for them to start with? 
<laughs> well, I would tell them to come to our website, uh, come to our YouTube channel. Check us out. <laughs> and then uh, put in Gateway Games, mm -hmm. and then we'll tell you what, you know, what we, su we suggest to you what you should get mm -hmm. to start off your journey in this hobby. Yeah. You know, we definitely, you know, there's a lot of Gateway Games that you, you can start off. We tell you to go, you know, look toward Catan, mm -hmm. definitely. Then look toward Carcassonne. Mm -hmm. Carcassonne is a good one. And then Ticket to Ride. Yeah. You know, those are the three, the three, you know, legendary gateway games that that get people in. So I definitely tell them to go there. Yeah, definitely. And then also, of course, go to the BGG website. They've yes. got different lists of family games yes. and everything. And they can look at the ratings of the games and it'll show pictures so they can get a background mm -hmm. of the game and know if this is something that they will like. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So good. And and the thing about games is they can go from really basic to where yes. they're for kids. Mm -hmm. all the way up to incredibly advanced that you almost need yes. college yes. degrees to figure out the rules and then apply yes. them, right? Yes. Like there, there's something yes. for everyone in, in what you guys mm -hmm. are doing. Yeah, we, we make sure, like, gateway games are usually the easier games to mm -hmm. get people in. Not that the rule books are easy. Yeah. We yeah. tell anybody, if you don't like reading rule books, this may not be the hobby for you because the rule books can usually be kind of daunting. You know, you got to really, you know, take them apart, you know, dissect them and look at them. But once you get past that, mm -hmm. then you get to the fun. Now, I always tell people, get a rules guy. So in our household, we have a rules guy. I'm a rules guy. And so nice. my husband takes the book and he looks through it and tries to figure out all the different iconography and the different, you know, terminologies that we're going to work on. And then we'll sit down and we'll uh, either try to play it that way or we'll go and look online for videos out there on the games. Because a lot what, of these yeah. companies will put yeah. out a video yes. about their game. And pay, people okay. to, and, pay people to do and pay people to show them how to play the game. And that's what I tell people straight up. Mm -hmm. If the rule book is not your thing or you say, oh, I don't feel like mm -hmm. doing that. Go online, go to YouTube, mm -hmm. type in how to play this game, and you know, how to, and you'll find somebody, and you'll you find that. somebody that will show you how to play that yeah. game. Yeah. 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 Don't oh. let the rule book stop you. Yeah. Don't let the rule book stop you. No, don't let rule book stop you. That's yeah. good. Is, is there some of these games that are designed to be played outside or is, are most of them designed to be played mm. inside? Most of them are inside. Yeah, because yeah. because of the, the components, yeah. if you get a good wind or something, it'll blow your stuff away. So you might yeah. want to be inside of a controlled environment. Yeah. 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 And, and the reason I was asking is there, um, what do they call that? Where you would go, you were almost like on a search on a treasure hunt and mm -hmm. they would hide these little things and, and you would go follow and find them. And so there's gaming yeah. in that. Mm -hmm. And then once you found them, then you would put it back and then the geocaching, it was called geocaching. Geocaching, oh, okay. yes, yes, And yes, so I was yes. wondering if there were games that out there that were like that, like, hey, you're gonna start inside and then here's the treasure map of mm. whatever, whatever, and you're gonna do yeah. that. So so these are mostly to be done inside and- Yes, what table, is the time. Average table time. Table, table time. And, and what, is, what is the average time of some of these games or that people would, would need to commit to if they wanna, wanna start getting into this? Not to learn it, let's say yeah. you know it, but to play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can go from 15 minutes all the way to three hours, or even more. Mm -hmm. So we have a there's a wide range of games and game times. Mm -hmm. If you say, well, Mick, I only got 15 minutes to spend to a game. We can show you a bunch of games that just 15 minutes, just play real quick, be gone. Yeah. Uh, Mick, you know, I'll be on a you know on a plane or on you know I'll be on a train. I just got maybe about 30 minutes, maybe an hour. We can show you those. I mean, yeah. you can. We can show you any type of time because there's a game out there that fits that time range. But in. also, the publishers they will put a time frame on yes. their games. So either on the box or in the rule book, it'll say this game is 15 minutes per player, or this game is 45 minutes for a, a four-player game. It'll tell you how long it should yeah. take it should. to play that game. Yeah. 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 Okay. And are there games that still follow? Um, pop culture like if there's a movie that's super super yes. crazy yes. then they, yes. they get games i know that used to be the case so i yes. didn't know if that was still happening yes well there, there's some games that do have the ips of some you mm -hmm. know game series and like, things like, like that Rikers like you know it has different things but back in the past some of those games that have ips of you know pop culture usually are horrible you're mm -hmm. like oh my god avoid them like the plague yeah. but now there's a lot of games with IPs that are fantastic yeah. and definitely, you know, just ch check them out. Cause mm -hmm. some are really, really good. Yes. Have really, you really met good. some of the game creators in your career now that you guys are? Yes. Like, yes. Are yes, part of yes. What are, what are the minds of these people like that create these games? 
Well, just recently we were at a um, a kind of like a I guess a, a game, game rant, yeah, a game, game games, rant yeah. with one of the guys who makes some of the most heaviest games. I mean, these games are so heavy. It takes about five hours to learn them and three hours or more to play them. And his name is Vital uh, Vital Lacerda. V Vital Lacerda. And we met him. Nice guy. He's, nice. he's Portuguese. He's Portuguese and he's a wonderful guy, really nice. And he just, I mean, I don't know how he comes up with it, but he, he brings out games about, you know, things that he's experienced in life, mm -hmm. you know, and he just brings them out. And I mean, just you see how he's working and his mind just moves and he wants to really make them hard and heavy because he said, I want people to really think I want to I want to break your brain. I want to break your brain. Wow. I'm like, geez, OK, man. Yeah. But his games are really fun. I played one and we played some games that he you know, his games are so heavy. He's decided to make some games that take some of the mechanisms and heart of his heavier into a more kind of, you know, gentle game, like a medium weight game. So, yeah. but his, his main goal is to make you think and, and have a brain burn. That's, yeah. that's his and, main and goal. Then on our show, OFPG Voices, we have game designers who have yeah. games in stores. Um, and they talk about how to design a game. Yes. If you want to design a game, they give you some tips and stuff on things that they've done to design their games. So we work around uh, game designers all the all time. time. We yes. see them all the time. All time. And they contact us constantly yes. about their games. So if we're covering a game, you know, we may get a call or an email from the designer who wants us to know something in particular. So, yeah. And definitely the publishers. We talk to all the publishers, publishers yeah. all the time, the designers. Yeah. Here and there, yeah. And so... Here's an odd question. You guys are, your life is these games and enjoying these and, and playing them, but now it's it's a profession too. Do you yeah. have other things that you love to do now outside of the games? Like what do you do to get prevent from getting game <laughs> fatigue? Do you, do you do other stuff or is it all games all the time? Mm -mm. Well, no. we're big movie buffs. We're movie buffs, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we love movies. We love Marvel and Disney Plus. Yeah, and we have a teenager, so yes. he wants to see the new movies that are out. So we try to go do that. It's whenever something new comes out, uh, we got to go see the new Mario movie that's out. He loves that. He he's a big Nintendo kid, so yeah. he wants to see okay. the Mario movie. So we definitely try to do movies. And then when we travel, we like to tour. So we like to go in, mm -hmm. you know, to a park or like we go to sculpture parks or to a museum to make sure we can get some of the culture that's there. Yeah. So we love doing that kind of stuff in addition to just playing. And games. just look at TV. Oh, we're yeah, TV we're people. TV too. people. Yeah, we're yes, we TV people. Yes. yes. Do you ever play games with the TV on and then realize, what am I doing? I forgot my last move because I was watching this. No, no that's a no-no uh -oh. in this household. No. No, music, no TV. <laughs> music, okay. very lightly, but music. Well, what no kind TV. of music? <laughs> what kind of music? Is it is it music that you kind of move around to or is it real soft classical or is it no, something it that lets you think? It varies. It varies. I mean, sometimes I want to hear some bossa nova. Other times we may be classical or we may just want to go with some classic R&B. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just, you know, just R&B period. Yeah. Or during the season, maybe Christmas, we'll Christ listen to Christmas music. Always Christmas yeah. music. Always Christmas holidays, music yes. during the holidays, yeah. See? That's great. You guys have been so wonderful letting us into <laughs> your life and into your world. I want to ask you both a, a simple question kind of as we wind down. That okay. I ask all my guests, and it's this. Is there one piece of advice that you guys have either learned or have been given in your life to this point that has helped you create this life that you have and, and made you the people and the parents that you've become that you would be willing to share with us? Well, my favorite line, which I tell my guys all the time, is to meet people where they are. Yes. Mm. And a lot of times we expect people to know things or to act a certain way because of how we were raised mm. and things we know. But I always tell my husband and my son, they don't know what we know. So we have to meet them where they are. They weren't raised like we were raised. You know, they didn't grow up in the same area of the country. So some of the things that are familiar to us may not be familiar to them. Mm. So something that may seem like an insult to you may not be an insult to them because that's not how they were raised. So let me meet you where you are and figure, figure you out. And then maybe we can come to some common ground and figure out the best way to communicate and go forward. Mm -hmm. Starla, that's mm -hmm. beautiful. What about you, Mick? Yeah. Anything you. to add to that? <laughs> nothing. I have nothing. She's the one that always comes with that th those things. She's the one and just tells me. Yeah. So yes. You, yeah. you just follow that advice and you're going to be good. Yes. Friend. Well, you know, she has a segment on uh, our OFPG uh, voices called Good Humans. Yeah. 
and she and in that segment she just talks about things to make you know what she says you know we're here to make one good one well, good our, our goal what is, is it? to make the world a better place one board gamer at a time yes yeah. and Ooh. that's what she does and and some of those you know those segments have been powerful and people talk about those segments all the time how it affects them and and helps them out so yeah that's her. That's her realm. That's her realm right there. That's her realm. You guys are amazing. You're so lovely. What wonderful people. I feel like I'm I'm enriched and fulfilled just from talking with you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if people want to thank get a hold of you, they want to see your channel, they want to learn more, they want to ask you questions about games. How can they how can they make a connection? That's well, dope. if you're looking for our family plays games, you can find us on Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, mm -hmm. Twitter, and YouTube. Just put in our family plays games, and you can also Google us. Yes. Awesome. Well, you guys, thank you. Just know that you have such a big fan here and all of us at Ramos Lodges. Thank you. In fact, Macy and Bradford from our folk, from our team have put together a Ramos Law board games night that happens this week. So oh. uh, it's so exciting. Awesome. And, and, and that's yes. um, in no small part because of, from your influence, right? So cool. Took that, that is so good. That is so good. That was Bradford. And so they're putting that on. So I can't thank you enough for the impact you're making in our business and the lives of our team. And, and I wish you only the best success. And uh, just know that whatever you need, we definitely want to be part of that journey. Oh, thank, thank you, you so, much. so thank much. much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. We had, we have fun. We have fun. Excellent. Yes. Well, you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll be in touch hey. soon. Okay. Right. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.